Breaking news out of Dallas, Texas, the mega church led by Pastor Robert Jeffress. Uh, it has just about gone up in flames. So this is an article from Protestia. They say firefighters were battling a three alarm blaze. I heard four alarm at the historic First Baptist Church of Dallas led by uh, Robert Jeffress. So people know Robert Jeffress as one of the top religious advisors to President Trump. His church was founded in 1868. It's a Southern Baptist church, a mega church in the Southern Baptist Convention. And just after 6 p.m., reports came in that heavy, heavy smoke was seen in the sanctuary. So it looks like that the old church building is where the fire was so that it didn't spread to the rest of the, like the main sanctuary where they worship in uh, now. But Nobody was hurt, thankfully, but this is a little strange. People are saying, you know, within just a few days of the failed assassination attempt against former President Trump, only a few days later, one of his top advisors, uh, his church almost burns down. So a lot of people are saying that they believe this was arson. And the timing is a little strange. And there's obviously a lot of strange things about this whole uh, case right with the, the Trump shooting, how the the rooftop was left unsecured, how Thomas Matthew Crooks, twenty years old, twenty year olds live on the internet. He has no social media accounts. He has no internet footprint. The guy's like a ghost. How did he get up on that roof? How did he get the rifle in there? Presumably, the rifle was stashed. And aren't the Secret Service supposed to sweep the area? How did he get the rifle in? 60 minutes ahead of time, he was flagged. He went through metal detectors. This is just coming out that they found a rangefinder on him. That's a device used to measure the, the distance of an object that you want to shoot at. Okay, so, and they let him in. He was flagged hour ahead of time. Then they lost track of the guy and they still let Trump on stage. And then they spotted him on the roof, you know, quite a while before the first shots were were fired and then apparently uh, the police and secret service knew of him on the roof at least two minutes before the sh shots were fired and it just didn't do anything they didn't pull trump off stage and there's a lot of strange things this guy thomas matthew crooks just so happened to be in a black rock commercial in 2022 if you don't know about black rock you can look into that on your own but like what are the odds the secret service said they didn't want to put uh, agents on the roof. It was it was a sloped roof, too dangerous, and yet, you know, it wasn't barely sloped at all. And the snipers behind Trump were on an even steeper slope. And none of this makes sense. None of this adds up. And it's obviously leading to a lot of people. You know, they're they're thinking this was an inside job. And the 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 fire at Jefferson's church. They're thinking this is arson. And you but you know the response. People say, well, that's a conspiracy theory. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that this happened or that. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know. You don't know. But the people who say that conspiracy theories, I, I think it's personally, it is reckless for someone to say as a fact. Like, okay, here's, I know what happened and here's what, nobody knows. We'll probably never know. But if you think that that's just not even possible, I think that's reckless to just say, okay, whatever the government, whatever the media tells us is 100% true. I mean, that's extremely naive. Now, what's the Christian response? Uh, because, like, what can you do about it? Well, you really can't do anything. You can pray, number one. Uh, number two, you can have a biblical worldview. And if you look in the Bible, conspiracy, okay, the word conspiracy, depending on your translation, is mentioned up to 10 or 15 times in the Bible, usually in the book of 2 Kings, which tells you that conspiracies are usually in the context of trying to overthrow or kill a leader. Even the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, there was a conspiracy to kill Paul. Acts chapter 23, 12 and 13, it says, And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed the Apostle Paul. And there were more than 40 individuals who made this conspiracy. So obviously conspiracies exist because we are in a fallen world. We live in a world that's under the curse. 
I know the Pope said that mankind is basically good and there's only a few rogue sinners out there. Uh, no, the Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. But the good news of the gospel is that if you would place your trust in Jesus because God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5.8. Romans 10, 9 says, if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, this is the solution. What can Christians do? You'll, you'll never know the truth. I'll never know the truth. We, we, can, we can see when something isn't right, hopefully. But we, what can we do? We can pray. We can preach the gospel. The Apostle Paul, there is a conspiracy to kill him. God spared his life because God still had work for him to do. According to church tradition, Paul eventually was killed by the emperor Nero in around the year 66. Uh, whether that's the case or not, God spared his life for a time because God still had a plan for him. I still believe that God has a plan for Donald Trump. I don't know what that is, okay? Uh, we continue to pray that the Lord would soften his heart and that he would be saved. And that if he did win election, it wouldn't be like the last time that he would really, you know, he did a lot of things that Christians liked, but, you know, is he a really, is he truly born again? I mean, most people would probably say no. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be hard on the guy after he was shot at, but this is our prayer that the Lord would save him. Either way, the, the mission of the church remains the same. Okay, the, the, the answer, the only Thing that we can do is respond with the gospel. Okay, we can pray. You know, I hope that today's Saturday. I hope you'll be in church tomorrow. You know, give, serve, be a blessing, keep fighting the good fight of faith. If Christians all band together, if we do what we're called to do, we can make a difference. Whatever happens in the political world, whatever the conspiracies are, what really happened, what didn't, you know, that is really outside of our control. What is within our control is that we can preach the gospel. So that's what this video is all about, sharing the news, but also leading into the gospel that Jesus Christ died for sinners and that through faith in him, a person can be forgiven and would be given the gift of eternal life. And the more Christians there are in a country, the better things will be. So it's time for us not to lose hope, not to despair, but to do the right thing and to get fired up for the Lord and for his work. And that is something that you can control. So tomorrow, Sunday, uh, what's going to be your reaction? Through the week, are you going to be in prayer? Are you going to try to help make a difference? Because uh, this country needs you more, more than ever. It needs Christians to continue the work, just like Paul was. And they tried to take him out. Obviously, if that's, <clears throat> if that's behind this, a uh, fire that they tried to burn Robert Jefferson's church down. You know, he responded. He said, hey, all, all things work together for good to those who love God. You know, he's not despairing over this. We shouldn't either. So keep fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up. That actually makes it get out to more people. That means the gospel will get out to more people. So if you do that, Greatly appreciate it, but until next time, may the Lord be with you, and have a great day.